What is up? How are y'all doing? It's Friday, and welcome to the WAN Show. We've got a great show lined up for you guys today. We're going to be talking about the cease and desist that Lenovo issued to Framework, the laptop company that I invested in, over their power button. We will also be talking about the potential upcoming branding for LTT Labs. Spoiler alert, it is not going to be LTT Labs. Um, Otherwise... I just spoiled it. So alert, I have not spoiled it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, John Deere tractor used to run Doom because oh, we are so big. slowly reducing the amount of things in the world that can't run Doom. No, it's a bigger story than that, Luke, but we'll talk about no, it, it is later. actually. It is actually very cool. Um, also, trust me, bro. Oh, no, you're really making that a headline topic. Do I was going to try and I was going to try and slip it in somewhere. Screwdriver people... pop up. Okay, sir. Sure. <laughs> Sweaters! <laughs> the metaverse is awful! <laughs> Shill harder, Luke. Shill harder. The show is brought to you today by Squarespace, XSplit, and Secret Lab. And no... It's not Secret Lab. They make chairs. Our lab will be a different lab. Yeah. Let's jump right into our first topic. I admit I debated you guys a little bit. I actually agree with Lenovo. This was this was a thing. Wait, that did you say you didn't? Had to happen. Well, okay, I guess I didn't, but the the implication might be that I'm like mad about it, but there's right. nothing to really be mad about. It looks pretty innocent. It doesn't look like it was something they planned to do. It looks like a very reasonable design. If you're making a plastic thing that needs to continue working and also needs to be moved. Yep. Um, uh, obviously, it's not their logo because you can't 3D print their logo without the centerpiece falling through. But yeah. the reason that Lenovo came after them, Framework tweeted about it, is that the resemblance of Framework's power button on their first party 3D printed case um, to the Lenovo O Legion design is unmistakable. That's what we call in the biz an oops my bad. <laughs> yeah. And they're and they're already working on it. They they asked for like community contests, uh, which is a kind of a cool idea where people can submit designs and whoever can come up with the best design is going to get a free uh i5 1135G7 mainboard, which is cool. It was noted by a uh, forum member Midcore that Lenovo's gaming le uh, O Legion gaming logo used to actually look like this, but that's the one I kind of remember. It bore a lot of resemblance uh. to the Mercedes Benz logo. Uh. <laughs> so as it turns out, there's just not a whole lot more ways that you can put some things through or on a circle. Actually, oh, am I? I'm wearing it right now. I happen to be wearing our case shirt design that has been pointed out to me looks an awful lot like the Renault logo. Oh, like Renault cars. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Not I intentional. No association whatsoever. It just happens to be a what what is it? Isometric view of a box. It's 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 a computer case. <laughs> it, it wasn't the intention. But yeah. That's what that's what happens. And given the fact that Lenovo and Framework do exist within the same space, they both make laptops, say, for example, I can understand why Lenovo, whether they wanted to or not, had to point out that their trademark was kind of being infringed and you guys really need to make a slightly different looking power button. Yeah, so as much fine. as as much as I don't think anyone wanted this to happen. I actually agree with Lenovo's cease and desist. Clearly, Framework isn't too salty about it either. So they are figuring this out. Now, our discussion topic here from Adam, from our writing team, is why do companies waste time and money on things like this? And they the, legally sort of have to. The reason is that they actually have to. If they want to keep their trademark, then they have to uphold their trademark. Yeah. And they have to go after anyone who is illegitimately using their trademark. And this isn't one of those things where Lenovo tried to trademark an actual circle or, you know, putting the letter I in a word. This is this very clearly a logo design and very clearly looked pretty much identical to the one that Framework was it using is a, for the power button. It, it, I do agree with all that. It is a little annoying because, like I said earlier, 
that design is very logical for making like a piece of plastic that would depress down into a button. Yes. So and it wasn't being like a logo on the product. Yeah. It it's was a literally functional... just a functional piece. Um, so that that part is pretty annoying to me, but I do agree with the things that Linus said. Uh, you can use it in in court cases. You can say like, oh, well, they haven't defended this before. So there was precedent set that they wouldn't defend this in the future. And people have won cases based off that. Yeah. So you actually do need to like defend these things. It's just, again, like this, I could see this being annoying for 3D printers that are trying to commercialize certain products. Oh, for sure. But then again, if you're not trying to make an enclosure for a laptop motherboard, maybe they won't go after Then you. they probably don't have to defend it because you, uh, it's I, I, enough I, removed. I, I believe. Something. Yeah. I believe we're, we're getting into works. things that we don't necessarily. Uh, dabble with too Yeah, much, I'm not but... an expert, but I do know enough to know that they, they do actually need to go after this. Yeah. In other news, Apple has restricted their ad tracking. Or nope. ad, ra- I'm sorry? Nope. Apple restricted ad tracking? Yes, but not necessarily their own. That's yeah, like not the their whole own. That's the, the whole, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the whole point. You know what? Fine. Why don't you do it then? Uh, in in uh, blah, blah. Mark Gurman, hopefully I said that right, predicts that Apple is going to significantly expand its own advertising business. And I was told by Riley that if this guy says something like that, it's like going to be a thing. So apparently sure. this is not, this is like technically a rumor, but also not really. This is hilarious. This is, this is much more notable because of other recent actions that they have partaken. Uh, they implemented app tracking transparency that requires developers to implement a pop-up asking users if they can track them outside of the app. But it doesn't do that for their own apps. That's hilarious. Because those are first-party apps with first-party tracking that apparently does not need the pop-up. I am not an Apple user. It is unclear to me if when you are first setting up an iPhone, does it ask you if it is okay to track or not? Because that, to me, completely changes this situation. Okay, well, why don't you keep talking about it while I go get an iPhone and wipe it? Okay, cool, yeah. Um, Because to to me, basically, if just like on Windows, right? When you're first setting up Windows, it asks you a bunch of different things about how, uh, like, oh, can can we take diagnostic data? Well, we're going to take it anyways. But can we take advanced diagnostic data? Or can we just only take basic diagnostic data, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way through the setup? If it's similar to that, if Apple says, can we track you for advertising reasons, whatever, uh, when you're first setting up your your iPhone, then this isn't a big deal to me personally. I, I understand other people might disagree. Um, but if they don't ask you on initial phone setup, and then they also don't ask you for individual apps, then that's a little bit scummy. Um, Apparently, when Apple first implemented their app tracking transparency system, um, Apple's own ad sales tripled um, while third-party app companies like Facebook and Snapchat had their ad sales drop by 13%, which is like massive when in some cases that's like pretty much your entire business. Um, Apple does sell ads on some of its platforms. Apparently they are planning on expanding this potentially. Um, Apple sells ads on Apple News, Stocks, TV Plus, Sports, and uh, inside the App Store. Apparently developers complained with the App Store because they have to pay to get the top search result for their app title, Um, but that's a problem with Google and everything else as well. It's so, almost like monopolies are bad. Yeah, it's just almost, a almost very negative way, but sort of how it works. Um, oh man, this is great. It's just it's so I. The thing that drives me crazy about Apple is not that they are any more evil than any other gigantic yeah. member of a, a monopoly, duopoly, or oligopoly, or what? What you know? Wow, whatever. Basically, any any other company that exists within a, a highly consolidated vertical. No, they're they're honestly they're not really any worse. But what they are is hypocritical. What they are is arrogant and what they are is smug. And so they'll sit here and wax philosophical about all the ways that we could protect the environment and, and do better and you know whatever. And then it comes out that you know, oh, their big idea here is that we'll stop shipping chargers with our phones. No, that's a cost-saving measure. 
That's a cost-saving measure and clever marketing for it. You never cared about the environment even one bit. That had nothing to do with the decision. And it's the same thing here. Apple will talk endlessly about how much they care about user privacy. And then they will go and put all their Chinese users' data in a data center that is quite literally owned by the CCP. I'm sorry. Do you? Oh, so you care about your users' data as long as your users aren't that color. Okay, sure, Apple. Good job. <laughs> you care about all this advertising tracking until it's your ad. Good job. Well, it's, maybe. So it's so it's fine, I guess. We'll you're see. not you're not really doing anything any worse than anyone else, probably. But you just are constantly engaging in this double speak about it. Just say, yeah, fuck you. We're going to take all your data. Like, okay, fine. Unless they're not. Okay, so here it is. Which we need to figure out. Yeah, okay. All right, so Luke is going to set up an iPhone for probably the first time. No. Really? I do for full play. Ah, okay. <laughs> we have an iOS app. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, no. I don't know. Do you wanna you wanna tell us tell us about it? Oh, in the meantime, I should probably tell you guys what's new on the store because we have like four topics for the show today. We got like nothing. So if there's anything you guys want to hear us discuss, now's a really good time to send in a merch message. And uh maybe we can maybe we can go have a look at what it is, talk about it on the show. I don't like, know do what happened know the, to the doc this week. You know this. Uh e ooh. Crap! What's the Wi-Fi password? <laughs> oh balls! Uh, I will. I, can, I will I look, look it up. up. That's fine. You, okay, you, you know what? No, I'm gonna. Yeah, 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 yeah. You look it up. I'm gonna. I'm gonna show off what's new on the on the store here. Holy crap! We have a lot of stuff that's new this week. Okay. I will go ahead and screen share with y'all. Here we go. <gasps> The RGB hoodie is here. You probably didn't even notice yet, but I am actually wearing this hoodie. It doesn't show up on camera very well, but it has these fun little color flex. It's called a multi-nep where they, uh, they they weave in these little colored little bits of, of other colors. I'm not describing it very well. You know what's easier is probably just going onto the product page and showing you guys what it looks like. So there you go. Up close, it kind of looks like that. So it adds just a little bit of fun into uh, an otherwise just comfortable, stretchy gray hoodie. Uh, another fun thing is that it actually comes with, I think, ooh, does it not? Okay, I don't know. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything then. Okay, so that's it. Subtle, stealthy branding down on the kangaroo this? pocket. Uh, yeah, I think. Nope. It doesn't look like it. Uh, what the? I don't. Oh man, come on. Okay, apparently I have to look up the Wi-Fi. So anyway, Sorry. if you guys want to pick up an RGB hoodie, we've got those live on the store. They're awesome. My my favorite shirt so far is the the white. Uh, I think it's just called Multi Nep. Uh, but that one, it looks super great. I know right now on camera from there you can't see it so much. Um, but it looks really really cool, and it's nice nice that it isn't just like random paint that was like tossed on it. It's actually little bits of fabric. Um, so it like feels cool, it looks great. I really like the the rainbow neck thing. That's all on the shirt as well, but you don't see that. On the sweater, you can see for him, it's mostly hidden. Um, but for me, because I have mine completely open, it kind of no. lays out on the side and looks kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, I like it a lot. These are like our favorite. I, when we got the shirts, I was like, man, I hope we have a gray shirt. I didn't quite get a gray shirt, but I got a gray sweater. Pretty sweet. We're getting there. Yeah. We're getting there, Luke. Yeah. Uh, in other news, we finally have it. It finally happened. The Lambo edition of the LTT water bottle is here. I don't have any notes on it, and I don't even know where to find it on the store. Linus, is right in front of you. No, I mean, no, I, I, I can see the water bottle, smart ass. I just don't know where it is on the store. I don't know where I mean, people can buy it. It's probably just on the water bottle with its own color thing. Nope. No, it's not. It's not. So I don't, uh, oh, it's gray. Why would it be gray? Okay, well, the Lambo edition bottle is here. Nice. Um, okay. 
It's gray. So good luck finding it if you didn't happen to watch this segment of the show. We'll need to change that. So, Ooh, yeah. The color yeah. looks very different in person than it does in the photos. Hopefully that's just a display calibration thing for me. But it's more of a dark green, less of like a, like a neon green. So hopefully you guys don't end up um, thinking that it's a different green or whatever uh how's that how's that set up oh you're on data and privacy now data okay and privacy. What's this up? icon appears when an apple feature asks you to use your personal information you won't see this with every feature since apple collects this information only when needed to enable features secure our services or personalize your experience there it is there's the juicy one that's the good one em. Apple believes privacy is a fundamental human right, so every Apple product is designed to minimize the collection and use of your data. Use on-device processing wherever possible and provide transparency and control over your information. There's learn more, continue. We're gonna continue. Face ID, set up later. Create passcode. Right. Beep, 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 boop, uh, boop. What, uh, you're just gonna wipe it again anyways? Yeah, but use one that I will know. Use the, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 please. Change. Okay, thanks, cool. Because um, <laughs> I would never guess that. Yeah. I'm trying to think of boop, this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, man. So, honestly, doesn't look great. Seems like Apple is basically just doing their, their usual rules for thee and not for me. I haven't even got there yet, nonsense. really. Well, I mean, it was right there. They basically said, yeah, we're not going to collect it except when we need it to personalize your experience. Personalize your experience is just marketing speak, business speak for collect your data and serve you. People in chat told ads. me that there's an option, but now I need like an Apple ID to keep going and stuff. And I this is just going to turn into a whole thing. Okay. Okay. thing. Okay. I have one, but there's like no shot. I remember the password. <laughs> yeah, I, I know mine. But yeah, is that it for the store stuff? Did you talk about the discount? No. There's a discount. There is a discount. There's a discount. If for a limited time, you can buy a Swacket and get a scarf for 50% off, automatically applied at checkout. Just add both to cart. There you go. The screwdriver warranty will be available next week, if you're interested. Um, uh, we'll go over that in a bit more detail later. Yeah, there you go. No more information. That's all you get. Uh, other than that, I think it's just things that we'll talk about more later. Uh, if I can do another topic right now, um, I don't know if oh you've seen God. this, but the it's not a text message service they're calling the metaverse looks awful. Have you seen this, Colton? I did. It looked terrible. It's actually stunning. Like I, I thought it was a joke. I saw it many times, and I thought that just like some YouTuber or TikTok person or something made a fake image and people were like that's funny and kept pushing it around uh and then only when i sat down here did i realize that it was actually real and actually sent out by the mark himself um but yeah let's this? let's let's get this on screen um, okay you want your screen up just right now so this is an actual message wait what from mark zuckerberg i thought this was a and joke that's a exactly i thought this was like a wee like apparently no apparently this is horizon worlds we're launching horizon worlds in france and spain today so it, it initially launched in like i think it was canada the us and uk does he just like have a secret desire to be a vtuber and the meta building the metaverse there's no just way because way of... vtubers look way better <laughs> They are way beyond this. Like VTubers are in a completely different world um, than the, this. The really People are bizarre... saying Photoshop. No, this is paint. Like or like maybe they uh, filled colored cells in Excel or something. This is like pretty much the worst thing I've ever seen. There, there's. It was pointed out by uh, I believe Ploof wrote this topic um, that Horizon Worlds, a free VR game published by Meta. Uh, was released in December 9th, 2021. It has an 18 plus age restriction. It was initially released, yeah, in Canada, the US, and the UK. And it has 300,000 users as of February. Second Life, a game released in 2003 initially, has 900,000 active users now. Um, Epic. Apparently, this has been updated. It's somehow worse. That. <laughs> You know, there's this like whole joke that he like people say that he looks like a lizard or he looks yeah. possessed or something. That doesn't help. 
Yeah, the eyes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think there's a soul behind them. Also, the game's already out. So that was a screenshot from the game. So they can't really like make it much better just like that. Like they they there there's some message that he sent out apparently about how they're going to be like working on it and improving it. Uh-huh. Like yeah, of course. It is not rated very well, but I can't tell if it's just being review bombed because it's Facebook. Um <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I can't stop looking at this. It's just such a joke. <laughs> I just can't. Like, oh my goodness. So he's digitally selfieing in front of a monument that looks awful, and he looks awful. And the other monument behind it. What is this button? Looks awful. Like, why? But he just. And the grass looks. It awful. looks so amateur. And what I think are potentially trees on a mountain look awful, but I have no idea what they even are. Um. Yeah. It's 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 horrible. Um, the discussion question is, how is he so proud of something that looks so bad? Is he genuinely clueless? Has he never played a video game before? Even VR chat looks way better than this. Yeah, I honestly don't know. Uh, I've been wondering that for quite a while. There are other Oculus first party apps that look wildly better. Like the home. Yeah. That's been out for like oh, yeah. ever. Oh yeah. Astronomically better than this. Oh yeah. So like, it's not like they're not capable of more. The Beat Saber avatars yeah. are like on par. Oh, better. And they're not probably. even trying. Yeah. Are you talking about the Oh no, you're not okay. No, no, no. That's a different thing. Okay. I was thinking about the like avatar that you use when you have the like No, 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 that's perspective. That's oh, a no. different okay, thing. Okay, so though. that's um oh, 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 v VR me or something like that. VR me. I Ready player Ready Player Me. Yeah. Yeah. You can create you can create an avatar of yourself at this level of quality in like minutes. Here, choose your body type. Take a photo. Oh wow! Look, we're gonna we're gonna go through the process. Gonna I'm gonna make yeah. I'm gonna make a better avatar than Mark Zuckerberg with his billions of dollars in metaverse funding, and I'm gonna do it on this crappy webcam. One moment, please. Oh oh no! I should pick a file. I should pick a file. Background too. Hold on. That's a good idea. So that that updated picture that you posted, there's also an updated like uh, landscape and architecture, textures, models, meshes, whatever you want to call it, picture. Um, they they got posted on Instagram. I have that post from Zuck himself, uh, but we'll we'll show that after. Oh, perfect! <laughs> so good. Here we go. Just the widest chin. Um, okay. Yes, that is Linus. It's perfect. I've never seen anything that looks more like Linus before. Uh, I mean, it's not great. Here, let's just, we'll give him a beard. It's because it's using generic, like, pre-made yeah, we'll models. You know what? You know what? Not bad. It's okay. Better than, better than I, I think this. it's using canned, like, model things. Meta. Okay, so you can, you can go to my screen. Th this are, these are the updated ones. Oh my god, this is so scary. <laughs> okay, it is worlds better than the thing on the left. Yeah, 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 yeah. Worlds better. And I would say... Ah, this looks more like James than like me. But this also doesn't look... Uh, yeah, it's okay, it's Mark. It's Mark. But he also has a very distinctive, gigantic forehead and very short haircut. So hard to say, hard to say. Yeah. Either way, the fact that this was just a simple little like character creator thing. Um, that can be put into VR, to be clear. Oh yeah, oh it's yeah, a yeah, VR yeah, yeah. Model. Yeah, so uh, this is what I used to create the model that I use for uh, full body streaming Beat Saber. And it was so here, I'm gonna this show, simple. I'm gonna show my screen real quick. So this bottom one, uh, which I'll raise up so it gets above our camera. This is the like landscape architecture textures thing that I was mentioning. So that looks wildly better than what it looked like in the picture. And I would say, while this still doesn't look like necessarily that great, there is an art style going on here and it is wildly better than the previous one. The thing that I don't understand is, I can't go back. Oh no. Oh no. Can I help you? Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> um, the the thing that I don't understand is why you would even like don't talk about that first one. 
<laughs> that shouldn't be released and that should never be seen publicly. Like that is trash. The second one looks like it could be pretty good. Like I could with with the art style and whatnot that's going on with this model thing, I, I think people could accomplish things that look pretty good. And with the architecture and textures and whatnot in the lower picture, I yeah. Someone someone one of the comments, I actually completely agree with this. One of the comments says, wait a minute, that screenshot is from a modded copy of Skyrim. I don't think that's like true. Um, but it, it actually it looks like it is. Um but for a VR game, you know it, like it's whatever. But yeah, that first picture is just so incredibly bad that I can't believe it was ever allowed to be viewed publicly. Yeah, very interesting. Okay, uh, why don't we jump into a couple of merch messages just so that people can, uh, instead of, guys, remember, don't send super chats or bits on Twitch or whatever else. I'm not like being like, oh, reverse psychology, you should definitely send, no, do, do not send them. Uh, if you want to, if you want to interact with the show, it's far better to pick something up on lttstore.com. Whenever we're live, you'll see a field in the checkout that'll prompt you to send a merch message that will go through to our producer, Colton, today, and he will uh, either have it pop up on the screen down below or he will curate it so that we can address it later. So if you have any suggestions for topics you want us to talk about, that is the best way to send them to us. I know that it requires money, but at least unlike a super chat, you actually get something cool in the mail after spending your money, even if we don't happen to address your topic. That's why we don't recommend the super chats. Is it just the value is the value merch message is much higher? Yeah, because like you get like a, a hoodie or like a, you yeah. know some hair scrunchies or whatever else it is that you happen to need. Sure. All right. This first one comes from Tommy, and it's probably for Linus. Uh, watched for almost 10 years and you've taught me the principles that shaped who I am today. What are some, that's so sweet. What are some important lessons you teach your kids? Oh. Run with scissors. No, no that's bad, Luke. Yeah. Who taught you that? <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> um, man, I don't, I don't know. I guess there's like, there's a few things that I'm super hardline about. Like one of the things that I will say to my kids constantly is nothing worth doing is easy. Uh, whenever they complain that something takes a long time or is hard, I'll basically just like, it's like, it's one of my stereotypical good. dad responses. Like, yeah, well, if it was easy, it wouldn't be worth doing. So mm. good thing it isn't because otherwise you're wasting your time. Like that, that's sort of the, the, the rationale. If it's easy, anyone can do it. So if it's hard, then you know, put your head down and get at it. Um, Embrace the suck. Yeah, another big one is manners cost nothing. I don't actually phrase it that way, but I am an absolute Nazi when it comes to please, thank you, excuse me. I have uh, witnessed this. Yeah, I'm I'm like brutal when it comes to that stuff. I will I will I will pretend my kids don't exist if I do not hear please. Uh, you know, even like men, they'll be like hurt and crying and want me to pick them up and i'll be like oh my oh for real though that, that i haven't witnessed for real though and the reason for it is that it costs nothing and means everything to other people so for me it's less about the actual words and it's more about taking that fraction of a second to be appreciative or be grateful or acknowledge that you've done something that you you shouldn't have or or whatever it is and it costs absolutely nothing and makes you a more pleasant human being to interact with so um so that that's a big one it's just it's it's just part of the overall just be respectful to other people um i, I don't know i mean there's just there's not much other than just like don't be a jackass i guess um the old wise words of bill and ted yeah, yeah, be excellent to each other, right? Like it's, uh, oh, I mean, one that I harp on a lot, I guess, is your siblings for life, figure it out. Um, you know, we don't really we don't really tolerate them speaking to each other disrespectfully. Um, like if they, oh, uh, whining's another one. So if they, if they whine about anything, you know, one of my big ones is like, what's the purpose of what you just said? Will it make this faster? No. Okay. Will it make us all more comfortable? No. Okay. Well then stop. Um, and it's, I don't know. My kids are amazing because that kind of stuff actually works and it definitely wouldn't have worked on me. I was awful. Like you couldn't go to a restaurant with me. I was like bouncing off the walls. Like that makes sense. Yeah. Thanks for that. No problem. I've been around Linus's kids. They're very well behaved. They are. 
So kudos. All right. Next one comes from McGregor. Um, and they say, he says, they say, he, hi, Linus. I work for a T-Mobile dealer and was wondering if you've ever thought about doing a video like Secret Shopper, but for cell service providers instead of PC retailers. We'd love to. The problem is that <laughs> there are so many facets to a service provider that are uh, device specific. I wanted to rage region at specific. Last show. Yeah. Sorry, I wanted to rage at Telus last show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's and like I still think they're the best option locally for internet because of Shaw's whole fake fiber thing and stuff. I yep, just, it was yeah. I've had good experiences. I've had bad experience with every telco. I just... When your company's that big too, it's the the chance you get someone really good versus the chance you get someone really high is the, there's like such a huge pool of people that that could land on. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's tough. All right, next question comes from Top Sponge. Hey, Linus, do the writers have any kind of partial ownership of the channel they focus on? For example, does Jonathan have partial ownership in MAC address, Riley, TechLinked, et cetera? If not, is that something you'd ever consider? That's a good question. Right now, all the IP is held by Linus Media Group Incorporated. Um, I think that, oh, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's honestly a bigger debate than one that we can really have here on this show. You know, I think you're getting into kind of like a... Um, uh, 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 oh man, what's the what's the term I'm looking for? Basically, it's like a capitalist versus more communist type of uh, philosophy, right? So, uh, own, own, ownership of the means of production, right? So, yeah, because I don't think you can stop at the the writers. Because what if yeah. there's a writer well, that's that ridiculous? What if the writer is doesn't host? Uh, why the why don't the editors and shooters have anything in this? Yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Like, what about logistics? Why don't they own some of the channel? They help so, produce it. Um, you know, our our approach up until now has been that you know, no, we pay, we pay well. Um, if you were to, I think that. If you were to come in with some kind of asset, and that was part of the the deal of of bringing you into the company, like let's say for example we were to okay here I'll use UFD since uh, he actually did an April Fool's joke that we acquired him. So if we were to if we were to hire Brett, then as part of that deal I might say hey Brett we also want to acquire your channel. Um, you know he might come back to me and say well I would be comfortable selling a uh, a portion of the channel, but I'd like to retain, let's say, a 25% stake. So in the event that you were to ever sell that asset, I would get part of the payout, right? That, that might be part of the conversation that we had about it. But because that asset was created from the ground up using Linus Media Group resources, no, there there is no ownership stake from the channel writer. Uh, you know, Jonathan Horst, for example, didn't even work here yet when we conceptualized starting up that channel um you know he didn't work on say for example the art assets so where's where's sarah's take right so uh, no everyone was working as an employee here at the company and the asset is owned by the company not even me personally and i know that that's a distinction that won't matter to a lot of you but legally it does all right i got another one this one comes from randall what phone is your favorite of all phones you've used as your daily driver? I'm going to get Luke to go first because I think he hates all of them. And that's funny. Of, of all time? Is that so like? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So in that moment in time, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Is it Samsung Galaxy S3? Is that the right way of saying that? The one that had the removable back and battery? Yeah, I think the S3 had a removable back. Yeah. 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 I loved that phone. It felt indestructible i i remember multiple times dropping it and it would just explode every single time the back would go flying in one direction the battery would go flying in another direction the phone itself would skid somewhere else uh and then it would be fine every single time um there was one time where i was running at school and i jumped over a fence and it was in my like sweater pocket so i'm already decently tall and then i jumped and then it went flying up out so it got some like air and whacked into uh uh like concrete and blew up everywhere and i put it back together going like there's no way this is gonna work and it immediately turned back on and was like i'm fine 
and that thing was a tank um and it was also like pretty fast and felt pretty nice for its time phones used to be durable man i dropped my yeah. samsung jive off the back of a cantering horse I don't know why I was trying to use my phone on the back of a horse while I was at running speed. Yeah. But it hit the ground, exploded. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Put it back together and uh and and it fired up. I guess that would maybe be one of my one of my favorite phones. The only thing I liked about it was it had this ringtone that I really liked. I've never had a better ringtone than that one. Uh, if I could find it, I would totally put it on my current phone. But for me, I'd say I have to pick the Note 9. It's the most complete phone ever, in my opinion. It has a non-picture-based face unlock with their iris scanner that I don't believe was... Mm, was, was it present in the Note 7? I'm trying to remember. The, the one that blew up? I, th I think it might have been. But it went away after the Note 9. So it had an iris scanner, which came in handy for me a lot. While all the... Um, definitely savvy shoppers with iPhones were pulling their masks off to use Face ID and putting them back on. I was able to use Iris Scan. Uh, also, it has a uh, like a touch sensor, uh, a fingerprint sensor that is not Samsung's new ultrasonic one that is slow and inaccurate and basically sucks. Had a headphone jack. Uh, the one thing that it didn't have is an IR emitter. Like uh, other than that, it had basically everything yeah, sd yeah, yeah. expansion notes were always very like every feature possible yeah. were it yeah. didn't have a removable battery but it's also not a ton of work to swap the battery in that particular device wireless charging no reverse wireless charging but that's something that even on a device that i believe this one has it i, I don't know i've never checked i don't care i would never use that i, I don't have any like proof for this but i always kind of liked the removable battery because of the drop it and it explodes thing because i always had the like thought in my head that it might be similar to kind of like ceramics Mm -hmm. Like some of the force goes in throwing that backplate and that battery and stuff like that instead oh, that's of in totally a thing. smashing something. So I kind of liked the idea that when I dropped my phone, it would kind of blow up like that. Because it's like, it's not like I'm not going to find the backplate. I still think it's a bug rather than a feature, but sure, I see where you're coming from. Yeah. I mean, I'm okay with a bug. That Lego phones. Just... <laughs> 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 I mean, they wouldn't do that unless it, it received a significant amount of force. So, I don't know. I was always down with it. D-Boss, yes, we do. All right. This next one, I'm going to apologize to you, Linus. This mm. one comes from Andrew. Hey, everyone. I was so excited for the channel Superphone on Floatplane. It was so hilarious. Linus, in two words, how much damage did Dennis cause to your house? Mm. I think you could use one word. I'm going to check the wording here because... Um, it's funny that you would say Dennis caused the damage to my house and not Dennis and Colton whoa, whoa, whoa. caused to my house. Don't involve me. Um, Definitely does say just Dennis, but... Sorry, I get two words to describe the damage you guys did to the house? Yeah. Um, thousands and dollars. It was pretty bad. How about that? So they... That, that they, floor was... They wanged the abused. banister which is a pretty small fix. A yeah. little bit of wood filler, some primer, sand, prime, paint, maybe sand again, paint again. Like you could probably, you could smooth that out. But the damage they did to the floor in the main bedroom <laughs> would necessitate taking like a not insubstantial amount. Like it's, it's basically not fixable. By the time they sanded the entire floor down enough to take out the gash that they put in the middle of my brand new, by the way. This is literally brand new flooring that was installed fresh as part of this renovation. The gash they put in the floor, they would have to take off so much of the top surface of it that you would actually have to pull off the baseboards, move them down, and repaint the walls. Like, you would basically have to remodel the entire f***ing room to undo the damage that they did. It was really bad. It was yeah, a pretty really deep bad. gouge, and we tried moving the bed at least three times. On the first time, I was like, this is not what this should sound like, Dennis. Let's go get a Vaughn. And he's like, no, 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 we got this. I like, just horrifying. You. No, we have- You were the adult in the room. We have- You bear part of the responsibility. <laughs> we have video evidence. <laughs> Brutal. Cool. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I don't, I think the- I don't know. How many times have I like yelled at our staff? Like like CEO yelling at What do you mean yell? Like straight up 
yell yell yeah like mad yell very like not few. just like you get quiet passionately yeah he gets quiet when he's really mad yeah, i haven't not, heard not that often i've de- i can definitely remember a few but not that often okay well, i have well, a favorite hit, one hit me with one i i have one that i remember that was like really good i was i was furious my favorite one was at my parents house oh what was that one i don't Scrap even remember Yard this Wars. oh were you okay. there? I heard. I heard about this. I okay, think. was that me? Was I off camera though, or was I hamming it up for camera? Because you were off there... camera. Okay. Uh, what did I? Uh, what was it then? I don't even remember. Um. Well, technically, okay. Technically, it was filmed. There is footage of it, but like it wasn't. We weren't like supposed. To, like a camera <laughs> would just happened to be rolling. Um. Uh, but someone was trying to because so. There was like judging happening in the family room, <laughs> and the judges were out in the garage. And yeah. you were able to monitor the filming and stuff that was happening in the family room, but you needed people to start shooting in the garage. And if you remember, like the whole reason why we were there was because yes. the day was crazy because the power yes. was out at the office and like all these yes. things were going weird. So it was a very stressful day. And then filming was like not happening correctly. And you, I, yeah, I don't want to recreate it, but. Were we filming Channel Super Fun too at the same time? Yes, at the field. Yes, with the bumper balls or whatever yep. it was. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, was a, a interesting day. That was a stressful day. I think I've only seen you yell twice, maybe. And I don't remember the exact situations. The time that I remember, because I was I was more furious than almost any other time I can remember running this company, was when we lost a shoot due to utter carelessness. Just like completely we're like dirt 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 dur, dur, lost the SD card that had the entire footage for our shoot on it. This was a long time ago, wasn't it? That was it? a long time okay, ago. Okay, yeah, yeah. I have very, very vague memories of this. Yeah, that was uh, that was back at the at the Langley house. Yeah. So there's there's not many times that I have like yelled at people unironically. Um and I wasn't even yelling at a person in that case because it wasn't an individual that was responsible for it. It was one of those as a team, we were just being utterly careless with our data. And I, you know, I find I find it's not the size of the transgression, it's the necessity of the transgression. And losing that data was utterly unnecessary. It basically was a combination of it's a boiling again. Utter, utter apathy and incompetence. Like there was just no other yeah, way that yeah, it could you have happened. You can't lose footage like that. Yeah. yeah. Um and and I and the specific circumstances around it though. Sometimes bad stuff happens. And I'm understanding of that. Like we've we had people uh, I don't think I even yelled when s- someone who's no longer here left an entire camera bag full of camera, media, uh, everything, just like sitting in front of a lobby in Vegas, just got in the cab without it, just f- left it there. Like I like Oof. stuff happens. But when it's when you had every opportunity in the world to, to back up the data and you just didn't, uh, then I get then I start to get really frustrated. Um so I was not as mad as I was when we lost the data. But because of how unnecessary the damage was to the floor, I didn't mince words. I think I made it clear that I was extremely unhappy with the result. I was Can't there confirm. when I found it. Yeah. yeah. You were he, there when I found it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's he right. sent a message over. and I was I read the message and I immediately understood the severity of said message. <laughs> I didn't yell though. Nope. I, didn't yell. No, I, didn't. I don't. I don't think yelling is healthy. I don't think it's constructive. There was a company that I used to work with, um, like back when I was a product manager, and I was told that their their boardroom meetings would often devolve into people yelling and s- literally screaming at each other. And I was, I, I was, I, I heard just this a and fight I, for volume. And Dude, I just went, what, what on, what possible reason could you have to be? yelling at each other in a business meeting aren't you all on the same team i interviewed somebody a few weeks ago for one of the business job postings we have open and when we're talking about you know why what's wrong with your current position they were saying like hey um the work conditions here aren't good and kind of dug into that a little bit and basically it was like yeah the way that we deal with any issue large or small is just screaming at each other and i was like oh that doesn't seem very constructive nice so yeah okay uh, why don't we jump into another topic while Colton digs through some of these incoming merch messages? Yeah. People are pretty into the new stuff. Oh, uh, you know what? One last thing, just because we do need to queue up all the merch messages. For those of you who were waiting, holding out, 
holding out for a guarantee, a warranty on the backpack. It's here. It's here. This is the Trust Me Bro Guarantee Limited mm. Lifetime Warranty. We offer a limited lifetime warranty that the LTD backpack is free from manufacturing and material defects. The limited lifetime warranty is valid for the usual and customary life of the LTD backpack. The manner in which the LTD backpack is used directly impacts the usual and customary life of the product as materials will deteriorate and fade over time and moving parts such as zippers will also wear. The limited lifetime warranty does not cover damages caused by misuse, abuse, or by accident or negligence, damage caused by rips, cuts, or tears, normal wear and tear, including the breakdown of materials over time, products purchased from unauthorized dealers, cosmetic damage, or unauthorized modification or alteration. In order to make a warranty claim, you must be the original purchaser of the LTT backpack from ltdstore.com or provide a copy of the original proof of purchase. So we do actually cover um, we do actually cover secondary owners or tertiary owners. We, we don't care. The reason that we have that in there like that and that we require the original proof of purchase is so that we can validate that it's not a counterfeit backpack. So there it is. Before you ask, yes, we had a look at what was standard in the in the sort of wearable on your back textiles or over your shoulders textiles industry. And this is pretty much right in there with everyone who has a what what was what we were told was a really, really good warranty policy. Um with the one difference being that, from my point of view, the whole original purchaser thing has never made any sense. Either you did a good job of making it or you didn't, and it shouldn't really matter whose back it's on, so we don't care about that. We just do need to make sure that they're not counterfeit bags, so we have to validate that you have an original proof of purchase. I've heard that's what it's kind of central around. It is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's the reason for it. But, um, I mean, yeah, I, I really think that it shouldn't be that hard if you're... Just, just contact support. Yeah, we'll figure yeah, it out. We, we, we should be able to figure it out. Yeah. There you go. Woo! Uh, should we talk about screwdriver or topics? Topics? Yeah, topics. let's talk about a topic. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. Um, let's see here. We've got a few good ones. We talked about Metaverse already. Oh, that's the main one I was excited about. It's so garbage. Airbnb, do we want to talk about this? This isn't super interesting to me. I'm just going to be... Hold on, we got honest. one one more thing. X War 2 says, at Linus, at Luke, I've seen so many people who, outside of never having read a warranty before, um, think that you developed the Trust Me Bro shirt from your own impulse. As far as the public can tell, it was asked for by a fan on Twitter. Is that true? Yes, it was actually requested. I thought it was hilarious, and so I did it. Apple kernel exploit. Didn't hear about it. He Sorry. doesn't approve. No, I don't. But it that's sold okay. really well. People love it. <laughs> it's a smash hit. Uh, great then. I don't know. I don't have to like like everything that we do. We're a big company at this point. We like, sold a hundred of them for every person who has said it was childish or petty. I'm serious. <laughs> it's like not even close. Well, maybe there's a lot of childish and petty people out there. And that's okay. Oh, yeah. Um, Okay, should we talk about maybe John Deere? That's a more interesting topic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, we should jump into that after sponsor spots. Okay. Should we do The show is brought to you by yeah. Squarespace. If you're building your brand online in 2022, you should absolutely have a website. Like, for real. If you don't think it's necessary, then you you need to get, 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 on, get on board here. If you need a tool to help build your brand and build your website, look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to help you expand your brand online. You can make a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything and everything from products to content. We love Squarespace so much, we use it here at LMG. Their custom templates make it easy to stand out with a gorgeous website. Say, for example, ltxexpo.com. We got that up there. And you can maximize your visibility thanks to their suite of integrated SEO features. And their analytic insights help you optimize your performance so you can see what's going well and what needs a little work. Don't wait. Get started today by going to squarespace.com forward slash when to get 10% off your first purchase. The show is also brought to you by XSplit. XSplit is an all-in-one streaming and recording application for content creators. Whether that's streaming games, business presentations, or any live events you may have coming up in your busy life, XSplit's got you covered. They offer features like Broadcaster for streaming and recording with a full suite of customization options. XSplit Connect Webcam turns your smartphone into a webcam. And Vcam is a virtual background tool for blurring out messy bedrooms so the attention can stay on you. No need for any green screen. 
Capture is a screen capture tool that allows you to add annotations and voiceover, and Presenter lets you add flair and personality to any presentation that you might have lined up. Use code Linus at the link down below and save 10% today. Finally, the show is brought to you by Secret Lab. Comfy chairs. Sometimes we have to sit in them for two, three hours at a time on WAN Show, and I'm very grateful that Secret Lab sponsors the show. <laughs> Their Titan Evo 2022 series chair offers four-way lumbar support, comes with a magnetic memory foam, headrest pillow, and is offered in different upholsteries like hybrid leatherette, soft beef fabric, and Napa leather. Best of all, a five-year extended warranty is included, along with a 49-day return policy, so you're covered if anything goes wrong. Go to the link in the description and check out Secret Lab down below. All right, let's talk some, about the John Deere thing. This I got is some huge. feedback in full plane chat about the shirt. Oh, yeah? Uh, one person said that they bought one of every color. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, another person said that it, it feels very applicable for their job. They do like IT work. So they oh. like it completely unrelated to its actual like original context. I mean, Which it's kind of sense. the original context. It's like, trust yeah, me, bro. But it's, yeah. Yes. But it's not like, okay. So what I should have said is not necessarily related to the backpack. Oh, I it's see. Like it related to like what they're doing. Sure. Yeah. It's kind of its own thing. Uh, should we talk about John Deere or should we talk about potential branding for the lab? Let's talk about John Deere. Got I want to get into that. This is really exciting because you know yes. what? John Deere. I'm happy this community is getting behind this. It's a good thing. Yeah. Um, this weekend, Australian hacker Sick Codes showed off Doom running on the touchscreen of a John Deere 4240 Universal Display, not, not the 4240 Tractor the 4240 Universal Display, uh, to the crowds of DEF CON 30 in Las Vegas. The monolithic tractor, behe monolithic tractor behemoth, okay, known for their green and yellow color scheme and putting anti-repair software on their machines, have been releasing touchscreen farming equipment for over a decade. Sick Codes mentioned he was working on right to repair hacks for farming equipment during a presentation at last year's DEF CON about tractor application programming bugs and exploits, which is fantastic because what John Deere is doing is complete BS. Uh, farmers were not happy with the uh, farmers were not happy with the talk publicly revealing so many vulnerabilities because some brands like John Deere don't allow DIY firmware updates. Yeah. But you need to do that so they fix it. Yeah, this because otherwise been... they won't fix it. And yeah. someone somewhere knows about the vulnerability. So get ready for that. Uh, Sick Code says in quotes, I heard from some farmers. One guy emailed me saying, uh, where is it? You're f***ing up all of our stuff. So I figured I would put my money where my mouth is and actually prove to farmers that they can root the devices. That's Awesome. What an amazing response what to a that. Chad. That's fantastic. Sigma. Sigma energy. Yeah. Um, call himself Chad Codes. Um, this all comes after John Deere facing mounting pressures announced in March that it would make more of its repair software available to equipment owners and finally allow them to update their tractor firmware themselves. This isn't going to happen until next year, though. And honestly, I suspect it will happen with many caveats. I'm adding that little bit in myself. Uh, vulnerabilities will remain on tractors not serviced directly by John Deere approved technicians. And touchscreens like the run one running Doom are designed to be remotely accessed to manage features like geofencing and curfews. <sighs> Discussion question. Is there a more anti-user company right now than John Deere? Um, I mean, I would say that you could easily find other companies that are very anti-consumer, but yeah. what makes it particularly offensive when it comes to John Deere is that this is essential. This is food. This is essential. It's um, food. And these machines are expensive. Yeah. And a lot of the expense is like people, farmers taking these like massive loans out so they can keep doing their jobs. Yeah. And they're, I, they're relying on these machines for very long periods of time. Like you buy one of these things and you, you lose, you use it for like, extreme amounts of time and you maintain it and you you wrench on it and you work on it yourself like so by taking that away from them that's like super messed up like apple opinion. pulls a lot of extreme dickhead moves for sure but realistically you don't need Once an iphone, iPhone. um so you know i would say in terms of of the of the destructive the destructive nature of what john deere is doing 
Um, they they are uh, they're much closer to you know the 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 mega. The mega corporations that are buying up residential properties, for example, and pushing home ownership out of reach of an entire generation See, that, of people. That's right a little now. bit like different it's... than what the question asks, though, because it specifically says anti user, not like anti people. People are users. Users are people. I mean, what's the difference from yeah, my point do of view? You use the. I would say the user of a rental property is a user. Fair enough. Like I just, I, I just mean like it's, it's just extremely when, when we talk about how horrible what someone is doing is. Uh, you know, we can talk about uh, we can talk about like uh, okay, the the pop bottling companies that are taking all the water while Mexico is facing an enormous like life threatening drought. Or what is it like Nestle you, buying like absolutely insane amounts of water from Canada for like a cent? Have you heard about that stuff? Just absolutely absurd. Yeah. Um. So so you know when when we yeah so it, it's not necessarily how egregious what they're doing is, but the fact that it affects our ability to eat, uh, eat, get shelter, uh, that's where it becomes just morally I've just, reprehensible. I've also just never understood, like, why are you messing with farmers? <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. Just, they seem like the, just this very, like, hardy, gritty type of people that just want to get stuff done. You're selling them a machine that they, for an extremely long period of time, have been buying these types of machines and maintaining them for huge amounts of time. There's like massive customer loyalty. John Deere has got to be one of the highest like customer loyalty brands ever, especially before all this started happening. Well, the reason you do it is because of this. You want to sell your service stuff. Right? Well, not just that, right? But there's this perception that in a in a capitalist society, unless you are growing, you are failing. Um, and, and I mean, you'll like, I, I remember, especially when I was younger and I didn't really understand the dynamics of the stock market, right? I would, I would see a company post that they earned $3.2 billion this quarter. And boy, that was way off what analysts were expecting. So their shares plummeted today. And I'm looking at it going, 3.4 billion seems like a lot of money to me. Yeah. That's, I, I, I consider that a win. Um, and so there's this pressure on a company like John Deere to continue ramping up their revenues. But you can only sell so many tractors. So they start turning to increasingly evil schemes to extract more revenue from this finite number of customers, right? So it's it's a systemic problem. But that doesn't absolve John Deere of any of the responsibility that they have to take for participating in it. They could just say, nope, our our tractors are our are, are user serviceable because that just matters a lot. And we're going to we're going to build out uh, a, a, like a servicing branch. Uh, we'll have a revenue stream from that, but we're not going to hold a gun to our users heads and tell them they absolutely have yeah, to use it. Yeah. They absolutely had that option and their shareholders might not have liked it. But at the end of the day, they don't have a ton of competition, so they would have been fine, maybe just yeah. less fine. Because the reason that the share price going up matters so much is not actually much to do with the day-to-day -day functioning of the company. All it really affects is how much you can borrow, essentially. And if you're running a profitable business, uh, there's an argument to be made that you don't really, like, Apple doesn't need to borrow money. Um, they have a ton of cash. And if they do borrow money, it's only because they are doing so strategically. They, it's 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 cheaper to borrow that money than to to use their own money. It all it's it's all a a whole way above my pay grade game that we yeah. don't really play here. Um, but if they're they're a profit, oh, I forget where I was going with this. Blah, 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 blah. Right, yeah. So it doesn't the share price doesn't actually affect the day to day operation of the company, but what it does affect is executive bonuses, right? So when executives are paid in shares and the share goes up, then they make a lot more money. So it basically just comes down to executive greed. Yeah. Someone pointed out too that they, they said in the US, but this is true basically everywhere as far as my understanding goes. Uh, farmers have a lot of gov government subsidies so that they can cheap, so they can keep the prices of groceries at grocery stores down. Because if they didn't, the prices of groceries at grocery stores would be much higher. Um, so in doing that, John Deere doing this hurts all of us. So you should care. But yeah, that's it. 
Uh, J.E. Realize asks, didn't Lance once say that if a publicly traded company doesn't make money, its shareholders can sue? Uh, it's more if the company misleads their shareholders and it turns out they weren't doing what they were doing, or if that publicly traded company does not act in the interest of its shareholders. John Deere could easily make the argument that it is in the interest of the long-term um, positivity, positive sentiment around their brand that they not engage in these anti-consumer, anti-right to repair practices. Yep. And it'd be very unlikely, even if they could have made an extra $10 million or $100 million this quarter, they, they could have made a strong argument for that. It'd be very difficult to sue them over not screwing their users. Yeah. Potential branding for the lab? Yeah, we can talk about that. Um, it's uh, pretty much settled at this point. I think that given the... Uh, we As much as we would have loved to use LTT Labs, um, we had some internal concerns about the close association with LTT. We want, we want the lab to... I mean, obviously, it's going to be associated. We're going to talk about it all the time. We're going yeah. to use their numbers. We're going to we're going to build products and services there that will delight us as much as our users. But we didn't want them to just be tied at the hip. Uh, you know, LTT and LTT Labs, they're just one and the same because we're still going to do stuff on LTT that has nothing to do with the lab. And we're going to do stuff with labs that has nothing to do with LTT. We also, as we move away from branding things with my name, uh, it's a matter of time before we change the meaning, just just retcon the meaning of Linus Tech Tips, change it to like something else Tech Tips or something and just, just change the branding to LTT, maybe rebrand entirely. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. But it, we felt it didn't really make much sense to, uh, to go with LTTlabs.com. Another concern that we had was that LTTlab.com we do own LTTlabs.com, so it's very likely we will redirect that. So anytime we talk about the LTT Labs or whatever, um, it'll it'll end up in the right place. But LTTlab.com, which would be a very easy typo, is a Chinese laboratory equipment supplier. So I think we would have... And because their page is so slow outside the Great Firewall, I think we could easily end up with a significant amount of abandonment from people thinking it's LTT Lab yeah, and just yeah. the page loading Especially really slowly. Especially because before going, that picture loads, it's a black background with orange text. Yeah, that doesn't help at all. Like it really looks like this our page stuff. is still not loaded. Wow. So, so it won't be it won't be LTT Lab or LTT Labs. Um, which meant that we had to try to come up with a name terms. that was gonna that was going to communicate, you know, what the the spirit of the lab was, um, while also being, you know, easy to type and uh, and and not conflicting with, you know, any of our any of our bitter rivals. So, you know, we kicked around some ideas, but what we ultimately settled on is it's going to be gamerscommandcenter.com. I thought, hmm. I thought it was only labs. What did we settle on? I thought it was only labs.com. Because oh, it's only. Hold on, I got to check the doc. Like I got to find out what we actually. It's, it's only laboratory stuff. Uh, what domain did we actually acquire? Um, hmm, labs two cents. Did we did we buy that one? Hold I on, I'm, so. hold on. I'm trying to bring up the doc here. Uh, did we actually even acquire the domain yet? Am I supposed to be talking about this, Colton? Did we get the domain yet? Live Laugh Labs? No, shut up. That's not that's not real. I know we had that was posted in Philip. We had LinusLab.com. I don't think we had Tech 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 Lab. We got a, a a domain, but I don't know which one. Um I thought we were supposed to grab all of these just in case. What about level one labs? I see I did actually we settle really, on that one? I really like that name. I think I voted for my memory is that we got only labs.com, but I, I voted for level one labs. Yeah. Lab Media Group. No, I don't think that's right. Uh, okay, Labby McLab Face. I don't even know what this list is. Am I even looking at the right list? Not sure. We're just messing with you guys. <laughs> the number of people that are upset about uh, Gamers Command Center. <laughs> Gamers Hatchery. Um, 
So the the current front runner is actually lab32.com. Yeah. And uh, the the reason for it is that it's a super short URL. It's easy to remember. It's really easy and fast to type. The branding is very easy. Uh, yeah, the branding looks really good. Sarah's actually done some some draft branding around it already that looks flipping cool. So the the merch, which I'm I will obviously go to supporting the work that we're doing at the lab, is. Um, going to look really cool, which is awesome. Uh, 32, people are asking why 32. And the reason is that it's, it was actually inspired by uh, a conversation uh, around the like executive table uh, where Colton was saying something about like system 32. Was it you Colton who mentioned like system 32? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so the significance of the number 32 is just that it's a number that comes up Biggest often eight. in computing, right? Yeah. Um, so a bunch of people are mentioning lab69.com um, that did come up yeah it came up but it's, obviously that's like stupid so yeah. we're not going to do that Yeah. Um, lab64 we also considered but lab32 just I don't know rolls off the tongue I think, it's, I think lab32 is better in my opinion I like it I think it's pretty sick and then when we checked to make sure that there was nothing conflicting with it right you know, no one else is is using this name or anything like that. The only real reference that we could find to it was actually one of the Chrono areas Trigger. in Chrono Trigger. There's a there's a there's a Lab 32 in Chrono Trigger, and this happens to be one of my favorite all time games. And I yeah, I just kind of I kind of kind of fell in love with it. Don't delete Lab 32. Yeah, see, it's like it's pretty good. I think it's good. I think it's solid. Yeah, yeah. everything else was just a joke that we brainstormed right before we started the show to troll you guys. Yeah, we did like a bunch of different YouTubers, made it sound like their things. Yeah. Did stuff like that. <laughs> Do you guys want some more merch messages? Uh, yeah, hit me, hit me. All right. This one comes from Ian. Hey, Linus, looking forward to get my LTT backpack and the warranty I won't need to use. I'm curious if you've considered making a camera bag variant of the backpack or maybe a camera insert for the backpack. Yeah, we've looked at making a camera insert. Um, as for a camera bag variant, I'd say that that is not impossible, but it's pretty far off. The thing about that is that as not a camera daily carrier, I I just have less to contribute, I guess. Uh, I also feel that it's a more niche market compared to people who carry a laptop. So it was a lower priority for us in the first place. Um, there's no real clear flow to the things I'm saying. I'm just brain diarying out of my mouth everything that we thought about and talked about when we decided on a laptop bag rather than a camera bag. I think that based on community feedback, you're more likely to see like a, like a downsized version of the existing laptop bag before you'd see a camera bag from us. But that is nowhere near even beginning development right now. So don't hold your breath for it. Oh, hey, we just fired up a poll for our float plane chat. Do you guys like the name Lab32? We want to know what you guys think. I think it even just like looks cool. Like typing it out, I was like, yeah, that looks pretty good. I don't know. I do. All right. I got another really important question. This, this one comes from Thomas. Question for Luke and Linus. If you could install any game on a John Deere tractor, what would it be? Um, minor VGA. Farming simulator. Nice. I like it. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, let's, see. Let's, see. Let's, see. let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Wow. 90% of the community agrees Lab32 is pretty good for a name, in my opinion. That's I, basically it then. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Yeah, especially when you just first present something. Yeah. I mean, we did have some people internally point out that it doesn't really describe what you do. I, you know, like it was compared to something like PC Part Picker, which has a very clear identity right in the in the url of the that, site that one's a good example yeah i i often find like there are certain websites that have names that are very objective like that that to me sound like bot sites oh auto written articles just trying to get your clicks off of google to serve ads interesting that that was my immediate reaction to at least one of the names that was even suggested in there 
uh, I don't remember exactly what it was. And it was a legit website. I knew that because I've gone to it before. But if it just came up as a Google search, and I had never seen it before, I would probably ignore it. Because it sounds like uh, someone grabbed a URL that they're like, that'll be really effective. Yeah. And I'm going to fill it full of like, scrape auto auto scraping bot posts that just try to get as many clicks as possible. So I don't know, I think a, a unique name is completely fine because you don't need the brand recognition for the URL for people that have never heard of you before. You can spread that brand recognition yourself and it's fine in my opinion. All right, next merch message comes from Radioactive Twinkie. Hey Linus and Luke, with the massive size, utility, and popularity of Steam, do either of you feel that there are any other compelling alternatives, or do you think Steam is basically in a league of its own at epic. this point? Epic. Yep, that's it. Just epic. Origin will never actually fully compete. Uh, you, you, whatever they even call it now, Ubisoft Connect, Ubisoft Connect. will never actually compete. Um, GOG is fantastic, but it's kind of in a, its own little niche and i think it does yeah. really well where it is and i don't think it's ever really going to truly compete at the scale that steam is at uh but yeah epic absolutely i mean will hold on is. a second i mean you could make an argument for xbox in the longer term i seriously doubt it they're certainly building in if they ever actually did successfully acquire discord for example and they started to integrate uh more community in xbox if they i mean game pass is already a way to just ensure you always have the tens, problem hundreds is of millions the, of users. the xbox app on desktop is horrible well, well, and the windows store is horrible yes and it would need to be removed and rebuilt to fix a lot of the problems that they have yes and i don't see that happening yes and they've they've been making all these commitments to pc gaming while having while trying to force their store which is nowhere near ready to be forced. It feels like the Horizon Worlds thing from Facebook, which mm. where it's like you really honestly thought it was a good idea to let people even use this, let alone try to push people to use it. Um, it's it's really bad. The worst thing about uh, Horizon World, whatever Horizon Worlds three or four, whatever the newest one is, um, I don't remember. Uh, but the worst thing about it is the fact that Microsoft deals with all the multiplayer stuff and you have to do it through the store. It makes it so that multiplayer is basically useless and you should just play the game as a single player game. And that sucks, that is super rough. The, the most brutal things about playing Halo is the fact that Microsoft runs the multiplayer and the friend list things are all super weird and all this other kind of stuff and it just sucks. And uh, I don't see those things being solved uh, because I think as much as um, the new leadership there have gotten rid of some of their old rules about not competing with each other and always building their own things and stuff like that. I think some of those ideas are still um, hard set at Microsoft and they're going to only use their own things and they're going to only do this other type of stuff and they are not going to invest enough in it to do a good enough job. So it will always be bad. That is my opinion. Hopefully I'm wrong, but that's it. All right, I got another one that kind of plays into what you guys are working on right now. This one comes from Zachary. Hey, Linus and Luke, how about doing the all the domains I own segment uh, you had the idea for a few months back? It'd be cool to hear the stories behind all the random domains you have bought. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'd love to. I actually don't think I have the login for our you don't have all of them. domain that. registrar. We um, have multiple ones now, too. Oh. Well, yeah. think, think about, like, I don't actually want to necessarily go into it, but yeah. Um, we would definitely have to prepare for that mm -hmm. ahead of time. We could do it, though. Because I don't think that particular uh, 2FA is even on, like, our, our, our accessible 2FA device. I think it's on, like, an air-gapped 2FA device. You don't, you do not fuck around with your domain registrar account. So uh, yeah, that's something we'd have to prep ahead of the show. Yeah. I think Yvonne might be the only one who has access to everything. Nope. No. Oh, all right then. There you go. <laughs> I don't think anyone does. Oh, um, is that a problem? Okay, well, we'll have to have a conversation about that later. Not really. But okay, hopefully it's all good. There's more than one, as far as my understanding goes, although I don't know about one of them, there's more than one person that has access to each. Okay. Okay. I can, I, I, I own boringmathlessons.com. 
That one's pretty good. Adequate video service. We own adequatevideoservice.com. Yeah. Blip, blip, bloop.com. I think we might've gotten rid of a while back, but that was one of the proposed names for float plane. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? Or something like that. Yeah. yeah it's something Look, like there that. were not a lot of dot coms. <laughs> That's um, one of the genuine problems. Like we were talking about logos earlier, but like dot coms, it's an issue. Like you can't just come up with things anymore because people park them and then want to sell them to you for tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds. Some of the stuff more. I might not have anymore, but I definitely owned um, gist of it dot com. And uh, the idea was that, that it was like instant news updates yeah. with like camera phone. It was like basically uh, like YouTube stories, essentially um or like shorts uh how the f <laughs> uh makeup for bros was a dot com that i owned at one point i don't think i have it anymore because i was like i'm never gonna do anything with this um but these were just uh you know the makeup for bros one was just identifying that makeup for men was becoming much more of a thing this is like 10 years ago and you know, kind of figuring out what uh, verticals other than tech we could start to establish a presence in. But yeah, we just never, never, never got on it. All right. This one comes from John. Linus, do you think Framework might implement a refurbished program or owner marketplace? Would you advocate for it? It'd be cool to offer my used hardware to other Framework owners. Um, Sorry, I tuned out for a second. Oh. <laughs> one sec all right no worries you want me to read it again nope okay um oh wait no that's a different one i thought i, I thought i had found it already implement a refer program or owner marketplace i don't think it's necessary it's called ebay like i just you're reinventing a wheel that already rolls pretty well on its own i'd, I'd say that is i'd say that's not necessary Pro move, though, by the way, buying a, a $10 gift card to send a merch message. If there isn't something that you're necessarily, you know, eyeing this week, but there might be something coming soon and you want to send a merch message, that is a way to do it. And it doesn't cost anything for shipping because we don't actually ship them. They're digital. All right. This one comes from Karthik. We need a Project Farm style screwdriver comparison vid. At the very least, tell me if it's wor a worthy upgrade over the Klein Tools driver. I think you should just wait for Project Farm to cover it because, I mean, look, I'm, I'm not going to put words in their mouth. You know, if they don't want to cover it, then fine. You know, you, you don't have to. Right. But I think that it would I think that that piece of content would perform well and we'd be more than happy to send one over. I think Project Farm buys the tools, though. I don't think they accept samples. So we'd be more than happy no to idea. make one available for purchase. Um, but yeah, there's no need for us to make a Project Farm video when Project Farm can make a Project Farm video. That's my take on that. Project Farm is a YouTube channel for those of you who haven't heard of Project Farm. Are we talking about screwdriver soon? Should we talk about it now? Oh, do it. Yeah, we, we should. Right. We're going to do a pop-up. Yeah. Um, the date is set-ish. Um, it'll be August 27th. It's going to be at the lab from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So that's August 27th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific time. We are going to have around 2,500 screwdrivers. So we are giving you guys a little bit more notice this time. Um, I'm not going to lie to you again. I will be there. Uh, but the point of being there, I'm not going to be wandering around outside. The point of coming is to buy a screwdriver. So don't just come and hang around. There isn't enough parking for that. Are we still planning on doing the stream? Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably what I'll be focusing on. Yeah. So we're, we're going to have a stream where people are going to be able to try the screwdriver. These are all actually final. Everything in here is final hardware. If you want to check them out, that's it. That's the, well, you can just take one if you sure. want. You're yeah. Greedy. You guy. are. I, 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 these are final hardware though. So these will be there at the pop-up shop. They will be available for purchase. We'll have 2,500 of them. Uh, we are going to have competing drivers there in person. Uh, we're going to have some scrap parts from Free Geek. If you want to like, you know, cool. screw a motherboard nice. into a case or whatever, we're going to have some wood and screws. You know, if you just want to screw things in, unscrew things, yeah, try out the, the ratchet, make sure it doesn't slip, make sure it's to your satisfaction. Um, yeah, we're we're real. Oh yeah, we'll have comparison. Did I already say we'll have comparison drivers. 
I'm not sure. So Vera, Klein, Snap-on. Uh, we're going to have comparison drivers from all the, the major major tool manufacturers for, for ratcheting drivers. And I'm... Uh, yeah, that's just because I'm extremely confident. And then like Luke mentioned, we're going to have a live stream. So people are going to be able to compare the drivers, talk about it to the live stream. I think we're going to stream on Short Circuit. I'm not sure if we've actually settled on where exactly I the stream know. is going to go. Correct. On Short Circuit. All I know, it's on Floatplane. I believe it will be silver version only at the pop-up. Don't quote me on that, though. Uh, some people are asking if you can get backpacks or potentially other things. I don't think we'll have any backpacks. Ooh, will we have any backpacks? I doubt it because well, of the, the shipment waves. Also, it is the silver version. That'll be at the pop-up. Okay. I know that. Uh, I cool. need to check something. Okay. He's checking. Someone said, I have a Father's Day gift now. That is correct. I'm never giving this back. I'm kidding. You're live on the show. You're on speaker on the WAN show. Oh, sorry, dog. Um, we just wanted to know if people are going to be able to buy backpacks at the screwdriver pop-up. Yeah, remember we uh, said we were going to leave the ones that were air-shipped in off to the side, and then there's going to be some there. It's probably like 100-ish. Okay, so we do have a handful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We said the ones that we shipped in via air for the backpack pop-up. Um, okay. We didn't sell it, that one aside for the screwdriver. Got it. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. We'll have some other stuff too. We'll have other stuff. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, we'll probably we'll probably post something midweek next week that just shows like what we'll have and what the pricing will be and all that stuff, just so people know ahead of time. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye. Okay, well, there you have it, guys. From the man himself. There will be stuff. There will be stoofs. Things will be had. Things will be there. It's finally happening, man. It feels good. Yeah. I had previously I had tried one of the like I don't know what like it the would failed be. QC ones. Yeah. Yeah. And like the actually turning it felt good, but switching the ratchet didn't feel very good. And then that one was one of the final ones and that, that felt that felt very crisp. Yep. That yeah. took a lot of work. <laughs> I bet. Nice. So yeah, August twenty seventh, uh be there or be square. Or like, or don't be there. Like, we don't we don't want like five thousand people to show up. The last thing we want is to to turn people away. Uh, also, if you for whatever reason, guys, we're we're gonna do LTX next year, so don't like get on a plane for this. Um, but if for whatever reason you insist on doing that, um, there's nothing I can do to stop you. But I will say, don't book your flight now, because we're pretty sure we're gonna do it on that day. But it's not a hundred percent sure we got the first thousand ratchets today and we've gone through 250 of them i think now to, to make sure that it's actually they're, they're good and they are but the other ratchets who knows they might get stuck in customs and we might delay it so that we're not we don't only have a thousand so that we actually have the full 2500 or you know whatever right like things can still happen but that's what we are planning on and it is pretty solid at this point that it'll be on august 27th just not a guarantee All right. Next merch message. I'm going to ban the word all right next. This one comes so from So is already banned. So, next merch message. All right. So, all right, basically. Just the, uh, um, um. Okay, I'll stop. Anonymous says, keep up the good work. Particularly love all the new house content. Is there plans for more home server, smart home, home automation content in the future? I feel like the lab could test Z-Wave, Zigbee, Wi-Fi stuff. There will be more home automation stuff in the future because I am almost certainly going to replace my light switches at this point. Not because Jasco is like a consumer unfriendly company, but because I bought a six-year-old platform and I am not that pleased with the features and performance. So... Um, while we did have that little miscommunication with Innovelli where they kind of went ahead and called their switch Project Linus and slapped my logo on it without consulting me, uh, overall, I do like their jam. I think they seem like pretty cool folks and they are already making progress on their 
motion sensor integrated switch using millimeter wave technology. I'm pretty excited about it. So what I would like is to work with them on that and swap out my JASCO switches for those, but nothing is set in stone at this time. Um, other than that, I definitely need to figure out the audio setup. We've got all the speakers installed, but nothing actually powering them yet. I have, what else is going on? Oh, someone else here, David S. mentioned the Sofa Baton X1. I have not opened the box yet. I definitely do need to do that. Um, checking, I want to check it out as a replacement for the Logitech Harmony. So there's lots and lots and lots more stuff. <laughs> lots more stuff to talk about. All right. I just said all right again. I'm going to stop. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Linus, with all the upgrades you made to your old house, brackets, tech, and otherwise, what are you planning on leaving behind for the new owners? Other than wiring in the walls, nothing, right? Like, you wouldn't leave... I don't, would you leave a server rack? I don't think so. <laughs> Man, Easter eggs. It would be a benefit to someone. I'm a thousand years away from thinking about moving out of that house, though, so it's it's pretty tough. So you're talking about your old one. Oh, the old one. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I thought we were talking about the new one. Sorry, I... I, I space for us. I, I think I think they're talking about uh your your old one. Oh. Well there wasn't really much there. Like there was like yeah, networking in the walls the and wiring, yeah. like speaker insulin like speakers. AC, you're not gonna take the AC out. Yeah like anything that's fixed to the house you wouldn't really remove. So yeah. everything everything I did is still there. Yeah. Perfect. Next one comes from Nathan. Hey Linus did your time as a product manager affect the way that you look at your own store and or what are some of your biggest takeaways from that time? Absolutely. I mean, everything I learned about e-tail, I learned at NCIX, both what to do and what not to do. Um, that was my first real job, actually, out of school. And I had some really good mentors there. I also had some less stellar mentorship. Uh, <laughs> like I said, I learned what to do and what not to do. But there's there's a ton of there's a ton of principles that we follow that are absolutely based on on what I learned there. I mean, one of the big ones is take care of your customers because angry customers, man, the, the number the number of people that I feel like thought that we would be willing to tarnish our reputation over like two hundred and fifty bucks over a replacement backpack was just kind of baffling to me. I don't want to sound out of touch, but in the context of the scale of this operation. I don't think that was the point. I can't believe we're getting back on this topic. We're not. Uh, okay. But in the context of the scale of this operation, in the context of the damage that it could do to our brand, $250 is nothing. Right. That's not why people were mad, though. I think people were mad for a variety of reasons, some okay. valid and some less so. Okay. So we can leave it at that. But, um, yeah, I saw time and time again NCIX just shoot themselves in the foot over very, very small sums of money. They would, you know, they would, in a situation where it just totally doesn't make sense and is just detrimental to the customer, they would they would enforce policies that just, you know, didn't matter, right? Like you'd have someone bring in a motherboard that they clearly opened, right? Like a $150 motherboard, let's say, and they opened it. And, you know, NC, it, it's totally still working. It's like brand new. They just opened it and it was an ATX motherboard and they had an MATX case, right? So they bring it back because it doesn't work for them. And NCIX, you know, rep be like, sorry, 15% restocking fee. And it's like, hey, um, particularly at that time, motherboard packaging didn't even seal. Yeah, It's a brand new board. You're, I know that you're going to just resell it as new anyway. So... We're talking if there, about if there was a seal and there often wasn't, it was just the tape on the bag on the yeah. inside. Oh, that and, and NCIX that opened them up in the first place anyway to put their own label on them. So they would break the seals on the products in the first <laughs> place. So we're talking about $22 on a product that you're going to resell at full price anyway. And a totally innocent mistake. The guy's not trying to rip you off. Like I just, I just, I watched mistakes like that made. That's going to drive a customer to another store for sure. Yeah, over what? $22? Because it's the 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 biggest thing is the like principle and the annoyance of that being charged at all when you're like trying to come back and trying to continue being a customer. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it was it was just That's frustrating. Silly. Like it's just common sense to me. Don't do that. It's not worth it, you know? And then as expected, that person would post on the forum and then yeah. and then we'd have to give them the full refund 
and a gift card to make them shut up. It's like, wow, good job. You just cost, you just played yourself. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, next one comes from Harrison. Hey, Linus and Luke, when hiring new employees, do you look for people with a lot of experience or would you consider hiring employees who may not have as much experience but want to learn a lot while at LTT or whatever company? That's going to get a big fat, it depends. Um, there's some roles where we can afford to kind of train on job and there's other roles where we can't. There's some roles where uh, we're, we're doing something new or something different and we need someone to come in and be an experienced leader so that we can hire other people that can train under them. Yeah, like Gary, for example, yeah. was, was someone that we hired. We're going to need someone with experience for that role. Yeah, and it's been great because I don't have to micromanage him. Like he'll just go and do stuff and then I'll have a meeting with them like once every week or a couple of weeks. And it's like, yeah, what are you working on? It's like, oh yeah, that's all stuff that makes sense. That's what I would have told you to do. If I sat and thought really hard and came up with a really great plan, that's what I would have told you to do. So see you later. You know, yeah. love having people like that. But and some, sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need other people that you can kind of mold and yeah, or, shape. Or you're hiring for a role that doesn't really exist. Like back when we hired for Nick sure. Light. Yeah. How many experienced YouTuber sales representatives were there? <laughs> well, for real, like, he, no, who like did you he, even poach from? Because you you had started it, but like the even the ad formats that we had were like not even really a thing at that point in time on YouTube. Like that's how old school the channel is. So yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, yeah, so there's there's a really big range. Um, I really like portfolios. I don't necessarily like if you can prove to me that you can do the job. It depends on the role again, because like Gary's role would need experience no matter what. But yeah. like from a development standpoint, if you can prove to me that you can make fantastic things and you're like codes open source, so I can see it and I can see the way that you develop, I can see the way that you document, I can see all these different types of things. What do I care about the education or experience? Um, you can do a fantastic job. So it sounds good. Yeah, hiring for a lot of the sales roles for the Linus Media Group side has been interesting because it's not just like we're selling things, right? Like you, it, it, it's it's completely different, right? If somebody's coming from the used car sales yeah. market and they yeah. apply here to work as an account lead and they want to sell sponsorships, it's not the same yeah. thing. It's yeah. very different. So, so we'll have to mold different. it a fair bit. Yep. Uh, Lil Inc. asks, do stores still have restocking fees? I return products every now and then and never had to pay something Some like that. Do. I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, this is a great example of rolling down a hill. Um, many IT brands have restocking fees. So in the event that NCIX, especially back then, were to return that product to their supplier, they're basically just passing the savings on to you, but in reverse. Uh, someone asked if we do code interviews. I have found that a lot of the developers that apply, um, due to the way that we send out the fact that we have a job coming in are often fans of the channel. Um, I, I would also wager to say that people that follow uh, like software development, software engineering, blah, 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 those types of roles are not always the, the most like socially experienced. Um, so there are often very high nerves in interviews when people are interviewing with us. So I don't see a huge amount of value in testing people live in that type of situation. What we tend to do is we try to give them a take home that we hope will take a reasonable amount of time. Um, and we try to frame it in a way that um, like if you were just posting on Stack Overflow, we would know. Uh, and it's not gonna be like super generic answers so that we can actually see how people would do things and we can see how they would comment and stuff like that. Um, that's, that's our approach. Oh, we should jump into uh, another news topic. The California DMV accuses Tesla of making misleading claims about autopilot. What? This is hilarious. How many times have I Where's called this? this? Oh. Like how many times, honestly? Yeah, Try to I'm number actually it. surprised. It'd be ridiculous. I, I actually am surprised that it took this long. I'm shocked it took this more, long. More than anything, it's just the amount of time that it took. Yeah, that's that's stunning. I For a second, I thought you were like making up the headline because of how many times that you said <laughs> Tesla is under fire from the California DMV for untrue or misleading claims about autopilot and full self-driving. 
The main things the DMV has a problem with are the terms and wording that Tesla uses, saying autopilot and full self-driving are terms that do not represent the capabilities of the system. No! No! <laughs> There's no way that happened. The use of the words full self-driving capabilities on their website, particularly the words, the system is designed to be able to conduct short and long distance trips with no action required by the person in the driver's seat. Um, yeah, yeah, that's pretty misrepresentative. According to the DMV, the way Tesla advertises their systems, oh, okay, this is sort of redundant, but that's fine. Um, although Tesla does have disclaimers on their website, the DMV says that these only contradict the advertising instead of curing the violation. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, DMV seeks to require Tesla to provide more accurate terms and descriptions and more and better consumer education of the product capabilities and limitations, is what the DMV said in a statement to MarketWatch. Yeah. Good. Yeah. This should have happened many, many years ago. Yeah. Back when Tesla's autopilot and full self-driving whatever was even less capable than it is now. The number of, I mean, I don't have to tell you guys, the number of times we've seen people asleep at the wheel in their Teslas is utterly unacceptable. And it, and it, yes, okay, it's supposed to like get you to not do that and it communicates that you shouldn't do that and stuff like that. But if you tell someone that something can do, if you tell someone that this machine has a certain capability, they're going to bypass that type of stuff at any possible opportunity. Remember when people were shoving oranges in their steering, wheel, steering wheels? Because it was like detecting it as a hand or whatever. Like people are going to do, people are going to get away, get around, sorry, those types of limitations. Um, Alex's yeah. uh, contribution here, he wrote up this topic, is on the one hand, Tesla has the best self-driving in existence. Sure. Yep. But in practice, it feels like handing your keys over to a teenager that's texting and driving. In my opinion, they shouldn't call it self-driving till it actually is. Right now, it's just really good driving assistance. Um, I find Tesla in particular kind of terrifying, given that they push out beta self-driving features to be tested on public roads. And um, there's no hecking way I'm trusting a car to drive me until it has been proven reliable and much better than the average driver for years. And that's fair enough. Which, again, is all like, yeah, as as far as my understanding goes, they they have the best self-driving. And that's that's great. And that's fantastic. And they should they should be proud and happy about that. Um, but, yeah, it shouldn't it shouldn't be uh, falsely advertised. That's all which is true about like everything. So yeah, not just, not just related to this. Yeah. Float plane chats talking about when Red Bull got sued for it, not actually giving you wings. Yeah. I mean, if that That's went through a little, yeah, there's no way Tesla should be calling their cars full self-driving or autopilot. Yeah. Cause Get some, real. sometimes with stuff like the Red Bull thing, uh, cause I think there was a Skittles one too, back then at around the same time. Skills said something in their advertisement, but it wasn't like as interesting as gives you wings. Oh, I don't remember. Um, but I, I think there was, yeah, I think there was a few of them back then. But like in those types of situations, it's like, well, yeah, obviously not. But in this situation, it's not an obviously not, which makes it way worse, in my opinion. Funny Hat says, any pilot will tell you autopilot will get you killed really quickly in an airplane with thousands of feet of space around you clear. <laughs> well, okay, so maybe maybe autopilot is is somewhat defensible but the full self-driving nonsense needs to go obviously and the average user the average joe public interpretation of the word autopilot is more inspired by science fiction films yeah. than it's inspired by actual airplane autopilot yeah correct taste the color of the rainbow if i remember correctly yeah i i don't know i don't remember that All right, some more merch messages. Um, also, okay, um, all right. This one comes from Britt. Hey, Linus and Luke, I'm a young entrepreneur and I currently run a game and VPS hosting provider. Any tips for me as a small business? Anything you'd suggest we should do for the consumers? P.S. Happy birthday tomorrow, Linus. It's mine too. Whoa. Anyways. Did you know that's on people's timesheets? What? Why? It's in the exact same font and the exact same setup as a stat holiday. Why? I don't know. In the timesheet? They they made me start doing timesheets this year, which was... Which you should have been doing the set. whole time. You should but... do it then. I put in way more than 40 hours every single week. What, what am I doing right now? You think I'm going to balance this next week? That's I not happening. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you should do it too. Anyways, um, this, so this is the first time I ran into it. I thought there was a stat coming up because I just saw the red text. <laughs> so I was like about to announce a stat in our meeting. And then I was like, wait, it's Lance's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that's in there. I think it's very funny. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, it's VPS company. Apparently, it was Taste the Rainbow, though. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I don't know. Uh, be nice to your customers. Yeah. Uh, under promise, over deliver. I mean, oh man, I don't know. It's it's word hard. of mouth is really powerful. So if yeah. you under promise and over deliver and yeah. are nice to your customers, those customers will very likely stay around, and they will very likely bring you other ones. Other than that, I don't think I can say anything too specific. All right, this next one comes from Kenneth. All right, is banned. <laughs> I keep saying it. I can't help myself. I'm just going to say the question. Hi, Linus. I know you drive the Valve Index for VR at home. Does it ever feel outdated or lacking in features to you? If Valve were to release an Index 2, what features would you like to see added? Wireless. Wireless. I hate the cord. The cord 100%. sucks. 100%. Yep. Um, other than that, their lenses just are not as good as Oculus's. It's not even close. And uh, man, the fact that they are still using LCD displays in high-end VR headsets drives me berserk. Give me OLED. Give me OLED. I need that fast pixel uh, yeah. switching time. Yeah, big time. Next question. Billy B. Yo, what's up, Linus, Luke, and Colton? Have anything to share about your health? What do you eat? Uh, like, do you eat healthy? Have a great one. Love everything you got. Everything you guys do. How did these? Okay, I know I said be a little more liberal. Okay, so you know what? No, no, good merch message. Good merch message. All right. Um, I wouldn't <laughs> say I eat super healthy, but I do try to like eat vegetables and stuff. I also try not to overeat. I mean, that's a that's a big one. Um, I often end up not eating too much just because the nature of what I do during the day means that a lot of the time I don't take time it's for food. Busy. Yeah. So <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it, but hey, it's there you go. I was skipping lunches for a really long time for the same reason and now I'm getting uh like uh meal prep stuff. So I just have to heat it up because that's all the time I really have. Um I this is not a recommendation. Blah, 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 blah. What I'm currently doing is overnight oats for breakfast every day with oat milk and blueberries and strawberries and then lunch is chicken breast rice beans and then either an apple and almonds or carrots and hummus and then dinner is chicken breast rice beans and either an apple and almonds or carrots and hummus and that's it you're lying nope okay i've lost 25 pounds in the last i think it's like six months nice that's a lot of money yeah not gonna go into what i eat Next question, <laughs> merch message. Nicholas, I just recently finished my second computer that I built into a record player. What's the coolest case or non-case you've built in? Brackets, besides the play button. Oh, well, that was obviously what I was going to say. Uh... Okay, well, I'll let Luke go first then. I'm, I'm kind of conflicted between either the, the follow bomb. bomb. Yeah. <laughs> or... I want you to guess it. I'll, I'll the be fire one. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I'm gonna get. Come on. Just yeah. Think of... Yeah. Yeah. Those two for sure. Uh, ultimately, out of those two, I think I'd pick. Yeah, the scraphead was for the fire computer. Um, but the follow bomb is pretty sweet too. People are saying that's not enough varied food and stuff. I said it's not a recommendation. Don't do what I'm doing. It's fine. And I'll, I vary it sometimes. <laughs> it's okay. I'll be all right. Leave me alone. Nighttime astronaut says timesheets are the enemy of motivated employees in a workplace that doesn't actively support a work-life balance. What are you talking about? Timesheets are how you accurately pay people. Yeah, I don't really get it. How on earth are you supposed to accurately pay people if you don't have timesheets? We have like flex time and stuff. Like it's fine. <laughs> We're fine. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm not trying to be a hater or whatever. Like, hey, thanks for the subscription on Floatplane. Like for real, love you. But um, you, you do need timesheets. It's just a, a administrative. I mean, nobody likes it, but... Yeah. Salary? Yeah, that's the... Yeah. Well, he's salaried. He's a manager. Got him. Yeah. But then I still have to fill a time Him sheet, too. This is great. Even though I do more than 40 hours every week. Wow. I could drag on... I could drag the WAN show out for as long as I want. Yeah. And it would cost me no <laughs> extra. would say the same things. Because we're all salaried. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Please. 
Please no. Isn't that a fun trick? <laughs> Did you answer the question, Lance? I don't remember. What oh, was the question? Coolest case. Built oh. In. Play oh. button. No, I'm taking it. All right, he's it. going with the play button. Fine. Got I'm taking it. Fine. Got Next merch, me- merch message. Abraham. Hey, guys, loving the new merch. What's your take on the new Samsung Fold 4? Especially since Linus has used the Fold 3 as a daily driver. Short circuit coming soon. Nice. Get subscribed. How much does it cost? Is it two grand? It's 1800 US dollars. Sounds good. I don't care. Yep. That's basically it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Next next merch message. I can't say merch. Next merch message you comes from Anonymous. Them. Okay. I'm just going to do that. I always <laughs> trip over the names. Will labs look at repairability or jailbreaking to extend the life of devices? Not necessarily at the start, but at least down the line. Jailbreaking, very unlikely. I think that's beyond the scope of how they're going to they're going to evaluate products as they're intended to be used but i could absolutely see them you uh you archived that one already i was going to look back at the wording uh (laughs) repairability yeah but absolutely repairability would be a major consideration for us when evaluating a product with that said we're not looking to replace iFixit. they already do a great job of providing repairability scores for key key new devices uh it's just something that we would consider as we go through and evaluate it as it's intended to be used, not as it's intended to be rebuilt and used. All right. This one comes from Amanda. Good Eve, gentlemen. Does the lab plan to test mics or interfaces that streamers slash content slash content creators commonly use? Also, does the total phase tester also test XLR and TRS cables? As a musician, I've encountered some snake oil there. Mics and interfaces will come. They're a relatively low priority category because they're a relatively low volume category compared to something like CPUs or GPUs. Uh, I don't believe it tests XLR or TRS cables, but that is something that we will be building out the capability to test in the future because we are planning to develop our own line of cables and we won't settle for anything other than the best. Beauty. This is ridiculous. What do you mean flex time is just to keep you from actually taking time off? People use their flex time all the time here if that was the point of it it is not working hold on oh wait i think they're talking about a different system oh ours is paid so it's basically vacation time and you yeah you like take it as it as if it is vacation time i think they're interpreting um being able to have flexible hours oh Oh, no, no, no. And being able to like shift your hours around. Oh, no. Flex time is just um, a policy that we introduced uh, back when the COVID lockdowns were starting to become more of a thing, uh, where on top of the legally mandated vacation time, we added two weeks of paid time that is not, strictly speaking, vacation. Is it two weeks? It's two weeks. I thought it was one week. I don't know. Is it a week? I don't know. Colton, help. Uh, Two weeks. Okay, cool. Yeah, two weeks. Is, is that right? Yeah, it's two weeks. Now I feel like I'm saying it wrong. Okay, oh, yeah. Gotta... Yeah, so everyone has two weeks of additional paid time off on top of their vacation time, and we call it flex time you because sure? you don't this have to... This is after your first year, I believe. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, so you don't have to book it ahead of time. It's after your first the idea. year anyways. I'm not so sure. Okay, we'll check. I'm often not the best at being on top of those types of things, though, so maybe you guys are right. Okay. People use it all this the time. This sounds like a lot of time. On it top is. of vacation time. Yeah, it is. It's like really inconvenient to schedule around. Yeah. Yeah. But but like to be clear, we care about people having yeah. good work life balance. Oh, no, that's cool. Um yeah. it's just from a from a scheduling standpoint, it does have downsides. Luke's sitting there having only used a week. Yeah, I I mean I haven't used that much, but yeah. <laughs> I've used some of it though. Like I yeah, I totally have. I've had stuff happen. Like it's it's really nice to because there's always the kind of dreaded feeling. Like if something really negative in your life happens and you're like, okay, I need to take some time off to deal with this. It's like, oh, I have to dip into my vacation time to deal with this thing that is just like horrible and doesn't feel like a vacation. It's kind of nice to be like, no, my vacation time is fine. It will stay there. I will use flex time. I think it's cool. I'm totally down. This merch message comes from Dor. Linus, you always mention not consuming long form content. Is it just time constraint or you don't really connect to the format? Uh, it's it's mostly that I just get anxiety when I look at a long runtime on something and I'm just like, I should probably be doing something else. Uh, I'll go do something else. So that's one of the main reasons I'll like never start a new TV show because it's like a you know, 15, 25 hour commitment in a lot of cases, especially if it's an established show that's been running for a long time or, or, or already concluded. 
and it's just a huge time commitment. And no, no, it's not that I don't connect to the format. It's just that A, time, and B, attention span. Like, I would never sit and watch an entire TED Talk. I just... There's there's no way I could... Unless it, unless it was very relevant to my interests. Like, I was it was say, stuff I must know. I yeah, could, I could think of a couple, but, like, it's... I've sat through long presentations. I'm fully capable of it, but it better be relevant. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah, some of these are not very good, Colton. But that's okay. You, you did great. Um, okay, so... Hey, uh, CM says, thanks for getting me through some tough times to Luke. Hey. No problem. And that, would you start doing more content about cool projects involving computer vision now that you have a CV dev in the lab? I think you're going to see us using our dev as opposed to just making content about computer vision. But in the long term, who knows? Jackson, I've recently started a video production business after freelancing for a while, and it has... Whoa, okay, people are sending a bunch of them now. And it has been tough navigating the business part. Did you have help with the business part? Sure did. Uh, Yvonne helped me a lot. I have an uncle who gave me some some pretty good advice at the beginning. Um, yes, I did. I did get help, but I also spent you know the previous six years or whatever it was in a fast paced business environment at NCIX where I learned a lot. Scrap metal, love the show. I was curious if you guys would be open to making a video about a budget server slash networking rack setup. Get the lack rack. It's all about the lack rack. The IKEA lack. Oh yeah, I've heard of this. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can yeah. just convert it to yeah. the the standard spacing for rack mount equipment. It's super cheap. Yeah, that's what like as far as I can tell, it's what basically everyone does. Yeah. Stefan, Stefan, I believe firmly in the benefits of video games. My sister does not. What kind of system or games could I use to convince her to let me buy my niece a console next year when she is old enough? Interesting. So mm. step number one, um, respect the wishes of the parents. Yeah. Do not blindside your your sister sister. Yeah, do not blindside your sister with the gift. It sounds like you're already you already understand that. Uh, and what you'd like yeah, to do yeah. is convince your sister. Um I would bring up uh games that the family can play together. I would bring up the that parental controls exist so you can limit the amount of time that can be spent because there might be a concern where like you can enforce the amount of time they can spend while they're home, but if they leave, are they just gonna spend all day on it? I'd say the I'd say the um the the creative and learning benefits of something like a Minecraft uh vastly outweigh the drawbacks of the screen time boogeyman. Um just but be, you be, might not convince her. Yeah. I'd be specific about the games that I would suggest, though, and don't just get whatever. Because, yeah, like, Minecraft is very cool for that. There's a lot of other games that are in that type of style where, like, it's a lot of uh, brain power and thought process, which is good, and creativity and whatnot. For Luke, Floatplane hmm. is missing some quality of life features compared to something like YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Floatplane also has a development budget, literally like multiple orders of magnitude smaller than YouTube, but yeah, yes. It is my, true though. my question is, what is your motivation to add these features as it will increase usage and raise operating costs instead of having supporters still use YouTube? Uh, Floatplane is less about the features and more about supporting us and the content. Content is king. Floatplane has really, really good exclusives right now. Uh, behind the scenes, um, like meet the team, uh, cutting room floor stuff. There's a, there's a lot of really good stuff on float plane right now, more than ever before. You notice we're pushing it really hard in the videos lately. That's not because, you know, Luke's team finally got their butts in gear and made a decent platform. They had already done that, uh, the hard work. Um, it's that we finally got around to building out a team that is dedicated to uploading creative, fun content That's over there. Really good stuff up. To make it worthwhile. I would also mention about features. This this year in particular has been really tough for Floatplane due to some um, staffing issues. And I, I think when the term staffing issues gets used these days, it's describing something that is not what I'm describing. Yeah, just uh, under hiring in the first place. Uh, well, I hear it used for that a lot. Well, that's, Floatplane definitely had that. 
Um, well, okay, yes. The yes. team was always smaller than the uh, our. Uh, what do you what do you call it? That wasn't the issue this year, though. Uh, yeah, I've been hiring like the entire year, but the float plane team hasn't grown at all. Um, they haven't? Nope, not yet. Oh, okay. oh that's they right. They will be. Yeah, but okay. yeah, not not quite yet. Uh, but yeah, we had some other staffing issues more related to people being unable to work for personal reasons, but they were going to come back and they have come back and we're very happy that they've come back. Um, and those staffing issues are solved slash still being solved because Yay. hiring takes a long time. Um, and there are more quality of life features coming down the pipeline. We heard a lot of people talking about the um, wanting to be able to see where they had left off in a video thing. So that's coming. Um, there's lots of other stuff coming. Yeah. Mike D says, thanks for the tip on the gift card, Linus. Quick question. Why do you always joke about firing Colton? He seems like a hardworking and valuable employee. Colton, uh, you know that I can tell when you send your own merch messages, right? Uh, I told all right. you. I told all you. Right. If, I told you if you do that again, okay. it's the end. I'll see you later. <laughs> uh what? How did it get? Oh yeah, we started joking about firing. Okay, so first of all, I used to fire Luke all the time. I don't remember how that started. I don't maybe how because it ended maybe because I hadn't even hired you because you worked at NCIX. Like I don't know. It would have been something like that. Like just I'm not sure. Just yeah. a silly. Thing I know we did it all the time on WAN show. It was, it was mostly a a WAN show specific. Yeah, thing. yeah. And then firing Luke all the time turned into joking about firing Colton when he copyright striked our own channel oh. for the first time. And I yeah, did it a second time, like right. a week later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. the that's where the fire Colton memes started, and then they kind of morphed into just like internally, just like Colton, right? Like that guy. Um, just in general, and then um, he never actually gets fired because, as you observed, he's a hardworking and valuable employee. So the memes live on, and so does his employment for the time being, if that makes sense. I love it. Um, okay. I love that you curated that message, though. Add to. Shai says, good day from all Australia. Okay, that was that was my best attempt. I'm going to stop that now. <laughs> Excited to get my hands on the new backpack. Pricey, but worth it for all the free content I've consumed over the years. Hey, shout out, Shy. I have a question for Linus. Do LTT employees get a discount in LTT merch, or are they given a set value they can spend per year? I think the internal policy is um, merch is free, but use your common sense within reason. I, Yeah, I I know the remotes, it's a little bit not as easy for them and there's been some people asking like if if we should try to figure something out moving forward i've talked to some other people internally about this but like figuring out a certain amount per year or like something yeah it's gotten to know. the point where it's kind of unmanageable because it's a lot of people if we were to give a backpack to everyone that's like literally five figures of money it's like a a, a person yeah. It's like hiring a person for that year. Yeah. So like so we we do have to figure out um yeah, I guess we got to figure out a better way to handle it. Oh, yeah, I'm not point. necessarily sure what the best one is. On the other it's... hand, people on camera have to be wearing the merch. Yep. And you can't force them to buy it unless you are a fast it food might, chain. It might be you want force it, you to buy your uniform. You wanted to with me back in the day. It uh it might have to be different per role. Did I I wanted you to buy. What did yeah. I want you to buy? You wanted me to stop getting merch for free, and you wanted me to buy it. And I was like, um, I need it to be on camera. What was the context and then you were like, of that you don't conversation? need everything. And I was like, okay, but I'm gonna wear the same shirts on camera all the time. And you were like, ugh, this was a, this was a long time ago. <laughs> I don't even this was remember like this. a really long time ago. Yeah, it's clearly a stupid idea. So okay, <laughs> I think this was like 2014. I'm or glad something. we got that. So well, I had no money back then. I think that's why. Oh, all yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, you had no money, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but but yeah, I, I, people on camera are gonna need more stuff. <laughs> so. Maybe they just have a higher like amount or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I guess. The last thing I want to do is create like internal politics around trying to get on camera so you can get more free shit, though. So I don't know. That's I don't fair. know the right answer. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, Steve, Steph Stephen asks, any plan on building DOS gaming PCs in the future? 
I, I think it'd be cool to do that. Anthony's been bugging me to do something like that for ages. I just keep not getting around to it. It's a matter of time eventually, but it's not happening anytime soon. Lev says, when, if ever, are we going to get RGB LTT merch? Hey, okay. It's not like, you know, lit or anything, but yeah, we, we'd oh, love, okay. we'd love to do some kind of RGB lighting thing or something like that, but it is absolutely not on the roadmap for now. Jose asks, any plans to do a Linux-like challenge, but with Apple, like the full ensemble, iMac, MacBook, watch. I have tried to do this multiple times. I did the iMac ages ago. And I think I was actually daily driving an iPhone at the time anyway, was I? I don't know. I can't quite remember. But I've tried multiple times since then. I'm like, yeah, all right, I'm going to put on, I'm going to use, and then I just immediately lose interest. Just, I don't know. I just, it just doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me. And it's, it just negatively impacts my quality of life for what? I, yeah, yeah I just can't. Uh, Nathaniel, how long did it take for you to get Expert Plus and Beat Saber. Um, any tips for someone stuck in hard? Don't do this. Do this. It's this it's, is much faster than this. It might be very difficult depending on the like sports and stuff that you've played, but you just gotta figure it out. It took me quite a while because I'm not used to that type of movement, but it was like significantly better once I started being able to pretty much like do it at all. <laughs> Kevin asks, I've seen ads for selling old YouTube videos lately. Have you seen or heard about this? You can sell an old mm. YouTube video for a one-time payment and the buyer gets all future revenue from it. Would you ever consider this? Seems weird to me. We were actually approached by a company called Spotter about not selling, because it wouldn't really work that way. It belongs to the channel that it's uploaded to, uh, but about licensing for a certain period of time our back catalog um, where they give you an upfront payment, much like what you're describing. And then over time, they take the recurring revenue from that, uh, that evergreen content that will continue to get views. Uh, they've put a bunch of work into ensuring that their, in, their investors or, you know, their, their company is making, is kind of, you know, beating what they would get just putting the cash into a GIC while also making sure that the creator is getting an amount of money that could be potentially business changing for them. For us, um, you know, we, we kind of, we thank them for the offer. We actually went through the process a couple of times when we were in situations where we thought we might need the money. And both times we kind of went, well, Unless we are going to do something with this cash that makes more than the internal rate of return calculation that they've done for themselves, um, it doesn't make sense. And every time we didn't have a plan for the cash that was going to generate a better return for us. So we figured, well, we're better off just holding the asset and getting the additional payout, even if it takes longer. We've never run out of cash since the first six months of the company starting up. So... Um, yeah, if, some, if something had come up where we like really, really needed a million dollars, like now, I think that something like uh, like a spotter deal or something like that could make sense. But I we're not uh, we're not planning anything like that right now, especially not after the initial success we've seen with backpack sales. That Shopify check is going to be wild. Chungo, I, I want to take a selfie with it. That's like more money than I've ever seen in one place in my life by a long shot. To be clear, guys, I just want to, this is not me just YouTuber flexing. Uh, we, we also have a lot of expenses. Like like getting the backpacks made. Like do, do well, yeah, yeah, okay, where's that? I, I, just, I just meant like do the math. We have over 80 people working here now, even at minimum wage. Like our, our annual salaries are like in the millions, right? So we, we actually do need millions of dollars just to operate <laughs> um lawrence says love the enterprise hardware software content any recommendations for a good for you case other than rosewell or iStar usa honestly i haven't looked at it in too long i do know that um i always forget what they're called but they make that case called the cerberus cerberus case oh man what are they called uh sliger Sliger has some cool like rack mount gaming stuff, but I have no idea what you're trying to to do with it. Finally, last one. You gotta Ooh, say Travis. It. You gotta say it. You gotta say it properly. Yeah, you gotta say it just like I say it. Yeah. Travis writes, so all right. Um 
How are you liking your Epson projector? I have the previous generation. I love it. I love it. I'm trying to get another one, but they are sold out for months everywhere. I told Epson, look, I don't even want a sample. I, wa I want to buy it. Can I buy it? They're like, sorry, bruh. No. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. I thought I'm an influencer. Can I not influence you right now? <laughs> like, no. Fine then. Uh, so I'm waiting because uh, I want a second one so that we can do a video on setting up a 3D projection theater in 2022. It, you can still do it, but it's kind of wild. <laughs> so I so I want to do it. That's cool. Yeah, that's the that's the plan for that. And that's it for the WAN show. That's all. We will see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. <laughs> What? Um, so you know we're still live, right? Um. Oh, I'm just <laughs> I got him. <laughs> Here I am, all concerned that you, you know, you haven't, you don't realize we're broadcasting. <laughs>